This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today we're going to talk about why setting a building on fire and causing it to explode can put you in prison for 195 years if you live so long, and why arson investigators may testify as experts as to cause and origin of fire, as long as and especially if they follow NFPA guidelines that will help to establish their expertise. Defendant Todd N. Perkins appealed 28 criminal convictions stemming from a jury's verdict, finding that he intentionally caused a building explosion. He challenged the trial court's denial of a hearing to determine the reliability of the bases for the arson investigators' opinions. In People of the State of Colorado v. Perkins, a May 4, 2023 decision of the Court of Appeals of Colorado, the Court of Appeals dealt with the claims of allegedly incompetent fire cause experts. The prosecution's evidence at trial established the following pertinent facts. In August of 2018, a residential apartment building in Denver exploded and caught fire. Law enforcement personnel, including two fire investigators from the Denver Fire Department, responded to the scene and found Perkins badly injured and burned in the rubble of of an apartment unit belonging to tenant Matthew Brady. A few months after the explosion, the police interviewed Perkins at the hospital. He admitted that he was in the basement of Brady's apartment on the date of the explosion. During their investigation, the police learned the following. One, in the months before the explosion, Perkins worked as a handyman for the building owner and had performed repairs in Brady's apartment. Two, the building owner had recently fired Perkins. Three, Brady had not given Perkins permission to be inside his apartment on the day of the explosion. Four, after he was fired, Perkins had sent a series of strange and arguably threatening text messages to the building owner. Five, there was a natural gas smell in the building before the explosion. Six, there were no gas leaks outside the building on the date of the explosion. And seven, right before the explosion, Perkins was seen either on the roof of the building or in Brady's backyard. A certified canine trained to detect accelerants identified multiple potential areas of accelerant in the basement. On the first floor of the apartment, the police found the gas stove turned on and the thermostat set to heat. Subsequent testing confirmed that Perkins' DNA was present on both the thermostat and the crescent wrench. Based on their examination of the scene, the fire investigators concluded that the disconnected natural gas lines in the basement of Brady's apartment created a combustible mix of natural gas and air that ignited and caused the explosion. A jury convicted Perkins as noted, and the court sentenced him to 195 years in the custody of the Department of Corrections. The prosecution endorsed Denver Fire Department investigators Don Peters Patterson and Jonathan Regenbach to testify as fact witnesses and as experts in fire investigation and origin and cause investigation. The fire investigators opined that the explosion originated in the basement of Brady's apartment and that Perkins intentionally caused the explosion by disconnecting natural gas pipes and igniting the gas. The court denied Perkins' motion to refuse to allow expert testimony from the investigators. The court noted that the standards set forth by the National Fire Protection Association, the NFPA, in its NFPA 921 Guide for Fire and Explosion Investigations are widely regarded as the gold standard for fire investigation techniques. The court found that the prosecution's experts were either NFPA certified or otherwise complied with the NFPA standards for fire investigations. Perkins challenged the reliability of arson science, a failure to strictly follow the NFPA guidelines, 
the court noted, does not automatically make the methodology unreliable. It was not designed to encompass all the necessary components of a complete investigation or analysis of any one case, nor intended as a comprehensive scientific or engineering text, because every fire incident is unique. NFPA 921 recognizes that not all techniques will apply to a particular incident and that it is up to the investigator's discretion to apply the appropriate recommended procedures in the guide to a particular incident. The Court of Appeal concluded, therefore, that the fire investigator's methodology was reliable because they used NFPA 921 to guide their investigation, even though they did not strictly adhere to every step in NFPA 921. Since the fire investigator's testimony reveals that their proffered conclusions were based on deductive reasoning, drawing from their personal observations at the scene of the explosion, that is, the significant amount of physical evidence of the explosion, as well as their review of related investigative reports and other documentary materials, including NFPA 921, the trial court, according to the Court of Appeal, did not abuse its discretion by determining that it had sufficient information to make reliability findings. In conclusion, the court stated the standard set by the NFPA, and specifically NFPA 921, the Guide for Fire Explo and Explosion Investigations, constitutes a reliable basis for an expert's opinion. Strict compliance when NFPA 921 is not required for an expert's testimony to be admissible under Colorado statutes, and that deviation from NFPA 921 go to the weight of the expert's opinion and not the opinion's admissibility. In my opinion, arson investigation is in part a scientific exercise based upon collection of facts. The NFPA sets standards for fire cause investigation. The standards are not restrictions upon the work of the investigators. They are guidelines. They are not carved in stone. The fire cause investigators followed NFPA 921 sufficiently to allow their testimony as experts, and the conviction was affirmed. The evidence presented at trial was overwhelming and could have been sufficient to convict Perkins and the expertise of the arson investigators were properly presented to help the jury reach its decision. Mr. Perkins should, and probably will, spend the rest of his life in prison. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zelma.com slash blog. At that URL, you can link, uh, subscribe to the blog. It's free, and you'll be advised of every blog posting, usually five or six a week. In addition, you can subscribe to the videos on rumble.com and youtube.com, and I'd appreciate it if you do if you click on the like buttons on either or both video formats. And if you found this video to be useful and of interest to you, please tell your friends and colleagues so that they can also subscribe to the blog and the videos. And if you want further information and details about insurance claims and insurance law, please consider subscribing to my Substack publication in my Locals community. Thank you for your attention.